Hello, comic book fans. Uh, Pete here. I, I always go to say Anchor Pete, but I just want to be Pete now. So Pete here, and I am with just Brian over there. Mr. Coors here. How are you doing today, sir? Hello there. <laughs> oh, it sounds so sexy, man. And uh, I kind of, I'm, I'm channeling a little bit of Obi-Wan with my hair, I think, today, my beard. But I'm you know, I can see that, actually, yeah. I'm just way more balding than uh, Obi-Wan. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, and so, as you can tell by Brian's impression, we are covering Obi-Wan today. The finale just happened this week on Wednesday. Uh, we are covering Obi-Wan Kenobi Episode 6. We are covering Ms. Marvel Episode 3. And we are finally covering The Boys Episode uh, 6 as well. So, I always sit and say, you know, I hope that you guys like at least maybe one or two of those shows. It'd be awesome if you're like us and you like all three. But, um, Brian, I ask this question pretty much every week at this point. Out of these three shows, which one are you the most excited to talk about? Oh, uh, of course, it's The Boys. The Boys. Okay. This okay. is one. This, I mean, I, I didn't, I think when we recorded last, I didn't realize that the next episode was Hero Gasm, and it was. And, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's funny because, um, there was something that happened in Obi Wan, and we're going to talk about it today that I, I had to watch it again because I enjoyed it so much. And I was like, oh, this is great. And then the boys happened, and I was like, oh, this is way better, and I like this a lot more. So um, let's just jump right into it. Let's go into Obi-Wan Kenobi Episode 6. By the way, if you're following it and this is our podcast, Brian, I think this is actually Episode 97 of our podcast. Oh, shit. That's awesome. Yeah, I know. I know. We're getting pretty close to 300. Uh, not 300. 100 there. <laughs> yes. Three um, more to 100. There, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. But um, I, I know I was a little off with the numbers, but we're getting there. We're getting close. So we are live on YouTube right now. We're going to be live on Twitch and uh, on Twitter. And then we have our podcast. So, yeah, that's where you can find us. Anyway, Obi-Wan Kenobi, episode six. So, Brian, I felt like Obi-Wan and Ms. Marvel were like the inverse of each other this week. I felt like the uh, beginning of Ms. Marvel was really good and was really intriguing. And then it kind of fizzled out towards the end. And then I felt like Obi-Wan was not very eventful in the beginning and just was like, come on, let's get to it. And then the ending was really good. What do you think? Um, yeah, I, I can I can pretty much agree with that. I, I, I don't think I don't feel Ms. Marvel fizzled out as much. I, I do agree it was more interesting in the beginning, but um, I would say it's rushed a little bit. Um, and but yeah, I, I pretty much agree with that. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, and one thing I, I haven't pointed out yet, but I think I should start pointing out, because I know that some of my friends like to like listen to just certain parts of these episodes. So we pretty much do like 20 minutes per show, 20 to 30 minutes per show we discuss. So like Obi-Wan, we're going to talk about for like 20 minutes at least. Um, so for Obi-Wan, just in general for this show, Brian, like what do you think was like one of the high, the, the high points of this show overall? Um. That's a great question. So uh, I think one of the highlights of this show was, for me was Obi Wan himself and him uh, just just dealing with the past and how how he experienced it and how he deals with it in in that current time period. Um, he does seem to overcome it a bit. He kind of makes some um, amends in here here and there. Um, I, with, but my issue though with the show in general is is that I'm not really sure why it exists. <laughs> other, than showing, other than showing some cool stuff. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe this is getting a little ahead of myself here, but do you feel that this is one and done? I mean, they, they've kind of said that. I feel like the ending of this is leaving it open somewhat for, for more in the future. Although I don't know what that is. Yeah. I, I just say to Disney, please no. No more Obi-Wan. We're good. We're good. I know that they're setting up a Reva, like like a spinoff series or something, but no more Obi-Wan shows, please. Um, it's funny that you asked that question because my friend Jay has been watching each of these episodes that we do, and he sent me a couple of questions this week. And one of those questions was, what was the point of this? And I know that like with um, like Twitter and stuff, you know, I saw at least one person say, this feels like fan fiction. Do you, do you get any kind of vibe like that or no? Um, yes. I, yeah. I, I do think it feels like fan fiction. I, I do feel like some parts were interesting. I feel like some parts were filler. Um it does kind of recontextualize some relationships of uh, from the existing movies and sort of does connect 
you know, the original trilogy and with the, the prequel trilogy. Um, but it's it's not like done in such a way that it was like like worthwhile, I suppose. Mm. Um, but it it does add some depth to some things. I, I mean, some things that I, I felt were like, you know, when they started this, like there were tons of questions where like, how does how does Leia suddenly forget about Obi Wan? How does mm. Darth Vader, you know, uh, he has the line of last when we met, I was uh, I was the oh, God, I can't remember. Learner. I was learning now, but now I am the master. Like, like they sort of do wrap up all those kind of questions that I had, but uh, like for what? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I generally do like when they add more depth to this. I, I mean, I can kind of think of like, I can think of a lot of properties where, um, you know, they, they they reference things that happened in the past. I'm like, oh wow, I'd be interested in seeing something more about that. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I kind of always hope that they would do more with it. Um, so I, I think ultimately the show does add a little bit of layer to some of these characters, but not enough to justify it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so that's a really good point. I personally feel like you could, um, like, you could go right from Revenge of the Sith into a New Hope, and it's not like, oh wait, how come this didn't happen, or where does this happen? I feel like all the questions seem to be answered. And you can, like, r- connect anything they say in A New Hope to stuff that happened in the prequels. I don't feel like you need this show to kind of bridge it at all. I feel like it's an unnecessary bridge, right? Um, however, I-, I do think about, like, prequels that are, like, great and sometimes even better than the thing that they are the prequel to. And, like, the current example I can think of is Better Call Saul, the TV show that's the prequel to Breaking Bad. And I know quite a few people who think that Better Call Saul is better than Breaking Bad. I, I love uh, Breaking Bad. I don't know if I like Better Call, better Call Saul more, but I do feel like what happens in that show expands upon existing characters and makes them more interesting and adds new characters that you didn't see before, and they're intriguing. Whereas with this show, I, I don't really feel like they expanded on Obi-Wan that much. Like, uh, for the high points for me... I would say that I, the two high points of the whole show, and I feel like you could almost get rid of everything else, is like Obi-Wan living on Tatooine by himself, and he's like going and cutting some kind of like sand whale meat. And I thought that that was like the most cinematic stuff they showed in the show. And then this last duel between Vader and Obi-Wan. Just if you just had those two things, I would be totally happy. So you, know? you, you just said that you don't think there was anything in this show that um, was – worth I mean, maybe i said it too it was worth or better than anything or, or necessary to connect these yeah. two things but i think there's one thing um that i think does kind of justify it almost senses and that's um that's the reason to have darth vader around more um you know and and obi-wan too i, I suppose um yeah you got a decent amount of obi-wan though from the from the prequel trilogy you really don't get that much darth vader anywhere though yeah but vader is in the original trilogy and he dies there yeah. And I think this is an excellent opportunity, a, a, you know, a time period to mine for stuff that you can do with Darth Vader. So in that lens, I think that's that's a success to me. But mm-hmm. in the lens of just about anything else, maybe not. <laughs> okay, well, let's 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 take that ball and let's roll it, right? Sure. So um, with Darth Vader at this point, so spoilers, you guys probably have already watched the episode by now. He gets defeated by Obi Wan, right? So at this point, you have Anakin becomes Darth Vader in Revenge of the Sith, but he's not in the suit yet. He's calling himself Darth Vader. He's defeated by Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan cuts off his limbs, leaves, and they get burned by lava. That's one defeat. Then he's defeated by Obi-Wan again in this show, in this episode. He's defeated. Um, he's not defeated, but he, um, like Ahsoka escapes him at one point in the Rebels cartoon. And she hurts him in such a way that's pretty much identical to what happens in this episode where she cracks open his helmet and you can see his eye through the slit right and then finally luke defeats him in return of the jedi so he's defeated essentially three times as darth vader now he's around for like 20 something years as darth vader and he is like this relentless killing machine do you think that by ahsoka cracking his armor and escaping obi-wan defeating him and cracking his armor and leaving him do you think that that 
diminishes Vader in any kind of way? No, um, because they all had very personal relationships with him. And I think that that is Vader's weakness. And I mm -hmm. think that doesn't make him a worse character because obviously Obi-Wan trained him and it was his friend. Uh, he kind of trained Ahsoka and then Luke is his son. Um, I guess he didn't really know his son until you know later on. But um, <laughs> I think that that that's that's a worthwhile answer to me. I, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Um, I, I, I kind of wish that I had not seen that image of his cracked helmet from the Rebels cartoon because I actually haven't watched that cartoon. I know he does fight Ahsoka at one point and she does that to him. Yeah, I, didn't I, know I wish that. That's okay. Wait, what's that? I didn't know that either, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to eventually go through and watch like the Clone Wars show, Rebels, Bad Batch. I want to watch all that shit. But um, I know that there's probably a ton of Star Wars fans that haven't watched any of the animated stuff. And so, like, to see Vader with his cracked helmet must have been kind of a revelation for them. Yeah, and I think also they needed to show um, that Hayden Christensen was on, in the costume. I think that was probably kind of like needed. Yeah, like a practical thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think you're right. Um, but I was going to say that, you know, f for this show and for this like particular battle, um, you know, what the fuck am I trying to get at? <laughs> um, like the, the way that it was done, I, I wasn't expecting Obi-Wan to beat him. You and I had talked about like, um, well, I had suggested that like Vader would think that Obi Wan was dead, and so did you think that like when he took those rocks and he buried Obi Wan, did you think that that was it and Vader was going to be gone? What What did you think? That was my initial thought, yes. But uh, and the second thought I had is why didn't he mention the high ground? <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, um, really I, I was waiting. To say <laughs> that. Um, yeah. I uh, you know what though, I kind of like how. Uh, I kind of like how they ended it though and how they explained why he gave up search hunting for obi-wan could be you know with uh the emperor uh you know coming away and saying like oh you have to stop you have to let go of your attachments um and i think that's okay i i, I think that's satisfying enough to me rather than him thinking he's dead and he's not dead like i think that would have been a little cheesy to me so i mm. I, I i prefer that this was like a willpower answer rather than a Oh, I guess he's dead, you know? Mm. So I, I, I think that's okay. Like, like this episode, I think, was pretty decent. I, I think it was uh, – it, it, it did redeem some things in the show. I still don't think it needed to exist overall. But right. uh, it was better than some of the, the, the previous ones, I would say. And I, I'm okay enough with how it was wrapped up. But okay enough is not that great. Yeah. Like, I'm not angry at anything, you know? Right. But um, yeah, it's just kind of like, like yeah, okay, it, it was there. I mean, there was some cool Vader stuff and, and fight, lightsaber fights and, you know, some some a little bit of character work for uh, Obi-Wan. And But that's that's essentially it to me. Yeah. Well, I, I truly did love that moment where he broke his helmet, where they were fighting. Because, like I said, I, I was expecting that cheesy resolution. Because everything that happened on the show prior to this – had kind of been kind of cheesy like everything sort of seemed like it was leading up to that sort of ending that i was predicting and then, then i was kind of shocked to see obi-wan like get his mojo on and like pick up rocks and throw them at vader and then jump up and slice his helmet um the, the thing with the emperor that you just mentioned why why i like what you're saying is the emperor has this really weird relationship with darth vader where he kind of says things to vader that like on face value are one thing, but he really wants Darth Vader to be like suffering and angry. And it's to make Vader more powerful because Vader's rage, his anger, his pain is like what makes him so strong. And I think that by him saying like, what are you like pathetic? Like move on from this Obi-Wan. That, that kind of makes Darth Vader just more angry. It's almost like that itch he can't touch is that Obi he knows Obi-Wan's out there, but he essentially can't go after him because the emperor uh is saying to not go after him you know so yeah. the emperor's like always kind of like you know hurting him in a way or like doing this like passive aggressive yeah, yeah that's what he is the emperor's like the ultimate manipulator yeah, yeah. 
And now, so, see, so, now let, let me let me say something here. So I love that answer. I absolutely love that answer. But at, at some point, some part of me wants to say that that's like head cannon, where like we're internally justifying it. And I guarantee that that probably wasn't what they intended. Right, right, right. But you're probably. But right. I'm. But it, it's not contradicted. So I, I'm totally cool with running with that. <laughs> Good. Okay. Okay. Well, I see. I like that battle. And to me, that sequence where he cracks the helmet and then we, we do see Hayden's face, uh, Anakin's face, and then the dialogue and the way that it's delivered, it's just like so good for me. Like, yeah. you know, Obi-Wan, Will McGregor's reaction is just like perfect. And he, and he you know, he says, Anakin, and he's like, I'm sorry. And, and it's so well delivered. And then, then I just love the dialogue, you know, where... He's got the James Earl Jones voice at one point, but he says, Anakin is gone. I am what remains. That's Hayden Christensen. Yeah. And then, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Anakin, for all of it. And then he says, I'm not your failure, Obi-Wan. And I, I think that it was so smart of them to have the James Earl Jones voice say Obi-Wan because Darth Vader says Obi-Wan a lot in the original trilogy, yeah. you know? So it's just. Uh, I so really did love the, the, the overlaying of the two voices in that scene. Too. Oh, so good. Yeah. Do, do you think that he smiled? Mr. Sunday said that he was smiling at one point. Do you think that happened or no? I couldn't uh, tell. Who, uh, uh, Anakin? Anakin. I did not notice that, but I, I'm, I'm very curious to go back and check now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Sunday was implying that, like, he's like, when he said, I, you didn't kill Anakin Skywalker, I did, that he had, like, a smile on his face. I, I don't know about that, hmm. you know? Interesting. But just like so well done. That that was the part that I really loved. But now I need to bring up my friend Jay's questions. And Jay has this really great question, which is um, like, why didn't Obi-Wan kill Darth Vader right in that moment? It feels bad for him. Feels bad for him. Just like he did. And that was literally his best friend. And he feels like he failed him. And yes. um, I mean, obviously, they, we know that he couldn't kill him because he still exists. Uh, you yeah. know, later on. Um, but th that was my explanation for it. Like he sees Anakin with, with the uh, through the mask, the, the 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 break in the mask, and he's just like, "Oh fuck, man, I'm sorry." Like, and he just couldn't do it, which kind of mirrors what happens with Reva, I think. And I think that's why they did it like that. Well, right, how does it mirror Reva? Because um, Reva, um, she goes, she she realizes she can't take on Darth Vader. So she goes to take out his son to, to hurt him some way, even though he doesn't know it. Uh, but when she gets to the point where she, she can do it, she kind of like she flashes back to what happened to her and she realizes she couldn't do it. And she kind of rejects the dark side. So she she felt she felt bad. Um, and, you know, she couldn't, she couldn't go through with it. So, OK, OK, OK. So is your point there that like mercy is kind of a sign of the light side of the force like to, to show mercy yep. and that's like a rejection of the dark side okay okay i like that yeah because that that was one of jay's questions too he's like why did reva want to kill luke in the first place and and you're saying basically it was like you know an eye for an eye vader stabbed me i'm gonna go stab his kid yeah even though he doesn't know <laughs> right 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 like uh, who's this boy yeah yeah um, and then, and then Jay's last question that I wanted to use is the question that you asked in the very beginning, which was, what was the point of all of this? And so, um, his kind of concern, and I've seen this on Twitter a lot too, is like, this didn't necessarily need to be six hours. Like they had originally wanted this to be a movie. I think this could have worked as a movie. What, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I think it could have worked, worked as a movie. Um, they probably did add some to stretch out into a series. I think if it was any less episodes than six, it would wouldn't feel right. Yeah. Like I think I think six is like a minimum amount for a, a TV show season, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I think now this is actually one of the problems I have with this, and I, I guess we haven't really mentioned this, but um, you know, we mentioned the Emperor appearing at the very end as like a cameo, and then Qui Gon appears to Obi Wan finally, which we right. all we all knew was going to happen. Right. Now that felt super super pointless to me. <laughs> super super incredibly pointless. Unless there is more to come, oh. which I don't necessarily think there is. Like I think they 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 intended this to be a limited series. Yeah, and I think if if this is a limited series, 
ultimately it's an okay show that didn't need to exist. <laughs> if if there is something to come after it, yeah, I, I think maybe just the idea that Obi Wan is kind of revitalized a little bit, and maybe he's going to go out and do something good in the world before returning to, to Tatooine as he gets older. Yeah, uh, I think there there may potentially be something to tell there that could redeem the value of this show. Whoa. Okay. Okay. And and, and to a lesser extent, Riva as well. I, I, I think um, I, you know, we've been very, fairly critical of, of uh, Riva and, and her uh, role in the show and, and the, the acting and whatever. Um, yeah. But uh, it was better than this episode, I think. And I think that if there could be potential to redeem that. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, uh, I, I kind of think, you know, what was, if, you, if someone asked, like, what was the point of Reba? I mean, she is the catalyst for this show to happen. Yeah. She's the reason why Obi-Wan is, is found and, and how all this stuff happens. So she's not pointless, but um, so I, I, I would almost like them to do something to make her more valuable other than just being that catalyst. Mm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. What you're saying about Reva, right in the moment of you saying it, made me think of something. I because one question I wanted to ask you was: Let's say that Reva had been a male, and let's say it was a white male. Like a lot of people, she got the the actress Moses Ingram got all this flash, this this like hate and stuff. Most likely because they thought that it's like, oh, they just made this black Star Wars character, and it's a woman, right? And they put so much attention on her, so there's all this backlash, right? And then I was thinking, well, what if it was just like a white male character that acted the exact same way that this actress acted, right? Like, would there be this kind of uh, hate or anger? And I think that if you made this a white male character, wouldn't they almost act just like Kylo Ren? Yeah, yeah, I can kind of see that a little bit, yeah. I mean, the, the, the mannerisms, because Adam Driver kind of does this sort of deadpan voice, and he obviously has a mask on and stuff, right? But um, that's sort of that, like, impulsive, angered behavior that Reva had. I feel like that's very... Uh, so, yeah, I, I think this is this is where I think it, it differs, though, is I think when Adam Driver did it, I kind of felt it. But when she does it, and I don't understand how people can say otherwise, I didn't feel it at all. Like, yeah. like it, it just, it felt like it was lacking. Like she was supposed to be this really impulsive, really angry. And I didn't believe it. I just, I didn't. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, if it was a white male uh, character, I, I, I think the, 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 the criticism would be the same, but I don't think the defense would be as much. Um, I, okay. I think that there were people like leaping to, to say, to, to, to praise her because of the racist commentary, which still fucking terrible. Just, just absolutely terrible but you know like there there are people that said that like you know if you didn't like her you're a racist I'm like that's oh. that's ridiculous i'm yeah, sorry I know, it's I know. ridiculous yeah um, like it's crazy how polarized star wars culture is it's just like fucking ridiculous yeah like but, I, it's just like they, they went to bat like a like super hard for it because of that and i i totally get that i mean like you know i, I don't want uh, you know, anyone to feel bad about a role or whatever, but like, you know what? It, it just didn't exactly work out to be that great. That, that's yeah. it. That was it. And that's, there's, you know, no hard feelings here, you know? Yeah. 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 I know. And, and so, I mean, like star Wars fans, they could just get so toxic. I'm, I'm sure that they get mean towards the kids and stuff in some of these shows, you know, I'm sure that Leia actress probably got some flack, but like, um, I actually, kind of like it. Yeah, there, there's a history of, of, Star Wars toxic fandom, you know, everybody hated Kelly Marie Tran. Uh, everybody hated, uh, it was Ahmed Best. paid for John Boyaga, I think. Um, what, what else was there? Um, I'm, I'm at best, right? Jar Jar. Oh, yeah, he uh, wanted to kill it, himself. And, and, uh, and then also, um, uh, Jake Lloyd as well. Jake Lloyd. Yeah. Yeah. Like th there's people are me. Don't be me. Yeah. people. <laughs> yeah. And, and, but the thing is, I, I kind of like the idea of looking at her in this lens that she's kind of similar to Kylo Ren because it's almost like they are the byproducts of Darth Vader, right? Like Kylo Ren is the literal descendant of Darth Vader. He wants to be like Darth Vader. She is like this creation of Darth Vader because he like essentially like killed her when she was a youngling and she came back 
as like an inquisitor. So I, I like that interpretation. How, yeah, and, and honestly, like that whole scene where she goes to uh, Luke's farm and then fights with Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru, that just, that was kind of rough for me. It's like, no, no matter how weakened she is, she should be able to dispatch with them pretty quickly. Yes, I, I agree with that, yes. I just felt like that was filler to get Obi-Wan there so that he could well, see her redemption. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so it, it was definitely a time filler, but even that, even in that sense, it, it did not work because there's no way he got there that fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Unless there was, uh, they were happening at different times and they're just showing it to you so you're not totally going with one thing to the next thing and it's a little interpolated. So um, yeah. they don't necessarily say the timeline there. And I believe that, you know, that probably happened a decent amount of time after you know, it's not like he just found that out and then went there and got there in five minutes. That did not happen, although right. it may have seemed like that in the show. Yeah, I agree. It sure did as hell seem like that. Yeah. <laughs> so um, did you have anything else you want to say about Obi-Wan? Um, no, I think I said it right. Like I said, if, if this is one and done, it's OK. If if uh, if they continue with it, um maybe there's some potential to redeem the this show in, in a sense okay yeah i i like i said i really enjoyed the stuff with obi-wan in the very beginning um i enjoyed that battle with obi-wan and vader but that's kind of it for me and uh you know i always wear my half in the bag shirt i wear them quite frequently in these videos but um on red letter media they were doing a review of the obi-wan show and i was really enjoying it so you guys should check that out too but of course make sure you subscribe to us first um, and Jay, thank you so much for your questions and for watching this. Uh, our friend John Edwards, he, I'm sure, watches the Obi-Wan show. And he also watches The Boys. This is probably the part where he's going to fast forward now for Ms. Marvel. Yeah, he actually texted me on Wednesday night. asked me, like, wait, what time are you recording? I'm like, oh, we're doing it on Friday. So I, I know he's, oh. he's looking forward to it. So that's awesome. So thank you, John. Awesome, John. Well, thank you so much for watching, man. Uh, the Ms. Marvel part you might not watch. I don't know. Who knows? But uh, yeah, we did that in like 20 well, minutes. I think you should That's watch good. it with your daughter, maybe, because she likes superheroes and, you know. Boom. Look at this guy. Look at this positive guy. So I'm going to say that I actually really, really liked the beginning of this episode, and I did not like the battle at the end. Um, did you see the Ten Rings symbol in the opening scene? No. Oh. Everything doesn't know. How come you're shocked? What? <laughs> Shit. Wait, you wrote okay, that okay. notes? Did I miss that? It's oh, the very first the note. thing you said. Oh, damn it. <laughs> must have so, so here we go. So here we go. So so basically the, the episode starts off with, um, you know, uh, Kamala's, well, I don't know, like her grandmother, right? Mm, um, no, the, it starts off, she's, she's with, with uh, Kamran and his mom. Right. But like there's, there's oh, kind of this flashback. Yes, the flashback. Yes. Yes. It's, it's her great grandmother. Yeah. All right, so they're in this like sort of this archaeological site and they are like digging around and there's a shot where you're looking from above and you're looking down at these people that we learn are the clandestines or jinn and right on the floor circling them is the ten ring symbol. Oh, so, I did not notice that at all. Wow. Yeah. Okay. If you go back and watch it, it's within like the first 30 seconds or a minute. Yeah. So okay. definitely worth checking out. So then here's my next question then. Did you notice that for the bangle, the arm and the hand that it was on it was blue? It was blue. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm assuming that's, 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 I'm assuming my first instinct was that it was a Cree person. Right. Yeah. So then Which further, further brings this around to connecting it to Carol Danvers. And, right. you know, but, but my question is, what the fuck is going on here? Because I mean, <laughs> You have like a Cree person with this bangle on. There's these people from another dimension. There's the Ten Ring symbol. Like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. So, I mean, this this show seems to be taking a very um, a, a lot of liberties with the origin here and everything like that. I mean, um, you know, they're talking about jinns and clandestine, um, and that was a that was a deep cut that I never heard of. I could yep. I have a vague memory of seeing like a like a trade in a five dollar bin of of an X Men and clandestine like crossover something, but other right. than that, I had no clue what that was. And I, I think even in the sense of uh, even if we did, like it seems like nothing like that, other than the mother is a gin. 
That's it. They yeah. seem like they're they're all gins and they're from this other dimension. Uh, it was it the Nor dimension. Nor dimension. Yes. Noom, but no, it's Nor, right? Nor. Yeah. The um, closed so captions spells it N O O R. Yes, I I had closed captions the whole time for this show. Um, yeah. So it, it helps me to to learn the names better because uh because I I can't uh, figure out how to spell them all the time. Um, right. So this is like completely original that has nothing to do with the comics this is like picking up a, a picking up a, a deep cut in name alone essentially and running yes. with it with your own thing and that's kind of cool i guess um you know this is um miss marvel is a still new character i mean what maybe 10 years 12 years no it's 20, 2022 she came out in like uh the, the early aughts right not early yeah. like late aughts yeah, like maybe like 2008 or so, maybe a little earlier. Like that. Yeah, we're right about that. Um, so I'm, I'm okay with that, and I'm okay with um, them changing it to fit, to connect it a little better to um, to Captain Marvel. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, there's the, the inhuman origin that Ms. Marvel in the comics has, and I feel like they are just really trying to distance themselves from that, right? And so um this is an interesting way to kind of start to mold ms marvel's origin around something that exists in marvel but it's not like recognizable enough where people would be upset that they're shifting it right yeah and oh. when i messaged you about it i said that peter david had created the clandestine and i was just totally fucking wrong completely um i was thinking of pantheon which is like this team that he created for his like long long hulk run that he did Clandestine was instead made by Alan Davis, this British artist who's drawn a lot of X-Men stuff. Uh, and he's a writer, too. He, he drew, like, Excalibur for, like, a really long time. And he created this team. And uh, you, you kind of said this, but just for people that aren't as familiar with comics as we are, essentially the idea is that there's this character from, like, around the time of the Crusades. And he falls in love with a djinn. They have children, and then their offspring are essentially like immortal, and they each have powers. It's an interesting story concept, but like Brian said, it's it's not super similar to the show. I mean, there's the idea yeah. that like that they're like um, that Kamala is a descendant of the Jinn, but the idea in the show is that the Jinn are from like another dimension, right? Yeah. So I, I mean, just to go back a little bit there, I want to just point out, you know, really point out how the lengths that marvel is going to take out the inhuman aspect out of this yeah. like they dug to this this depth of of something this yeah this level of obscurity just to avoid inhumans <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know I, I, there there's there's a, a a wealth of of mysterious groups in the marvel universe um you know that are immortals you know you have the eternals you have well i mean inhumans aren't necessarily immortal or but they have they might have some longevity. Uh, they have. Mm -hmm. there's, there's this. There, there's uh, the, there's the externals and there's mutants and there's all these other different things. And it's just like so many of them still seem so similar. Um, yeah. I mean, part of me wishes it was just a little simpler, I guess. <laughs> and maybe they just kept it simpler for the the MCU rather than having all these things. But um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, so so there's so many people that don't like Phase Four of Marvel, and I kind of understand. I was actually watching Infinity, not Infinity War, Endgame the other day, and I kind of watched it in installments. And I was like, this is so good, but it really truly does feel like everything is ending, and then everything from that point, it just kind of seems like, oh, we're kind of starting things up again. Like we're going to talk about uh, the boys in a little bit, and Eric Kripke is the showrunner for the show, but he did Supernatural. And Eric Kripke did this beautiful, beautiful run of Supernatural within five seasons. And then he had like this perfect ending for the show and it could have ended. But then it went on for like 13 fucking more seasons or something like that, right? I totally agree. And I stopped watching that show somewhere in the season six or early season seven. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's – the MCU can kind of feel a little bit like that. There, there's stuff where I'm like, what are they doing exactly? I, I – have enjoyed phase four stuff however i will say that i understand why people are starting to kind of maybe pull back a little bit or not getting as engaged in some of this stuff i understand it I, i'm not saying i dislike it but like to me this is like a good example of it because like the, the, now they're suggesting there's another dimension where these gin come from 
And then in uh, Shang-Chi, they're saying it's this other dimension where like this Chinese mythology kind of people come from the Talo right. dimension. Yeah, so it's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, is the implication there that like other dimensions have these beings that kind of form our mythologies? And like, does that mean that maybe Asgard is actually another dimension or maybe like Asgard is like a, like a foothold in our dimension from another dimension or, uh, you know, like, do you think that when they go to um, Olympus in Thor, uh, Love and Thunder, that that's going to be its own dimension? Like, what do you think? Oh, man, that's a great question. I mean, in the comics, they have that concept of realms, but it, that, yeah. that's very based on the, the, the Thor, the core Thor world. Um, and I mean, like, what, what, what really is the difference between a realm and a dimension? I mean, in right. the comics, I suppose, uh i i think a different dimension i i think of the same uh the same place but just different things happen yeah you know, something changed differently but they're seeming making it seem like and you know we can add we can, america chavez dimension this as well where things are like drastically different there, there's not an earth or anything like that necessarily it's just another place of of existence and there just seems to be a lot of them rather than what i i would say is like oh here's a dimension where the X-Men didn't exist or Peter Parker was a jerk or something. I, I don't know. You know that, that's, yeah. that's what I would think a di different dimension was uh, in comic terms. I think that like in comics, they, they really have played with the idea of the multiverse so much in like the last 20 years. I mean, basically since like crisis on infinite earths, but like, I think that they, they do try to make the distinction between realities and dimensions. And I think that like realities are like what you said, where it's like, oh, in this reality, you know, Spider-Man is a pig or something. Or in this reality, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I know there's a Spider-Man pig. My kid's right over there. Probably shouldn't drop the F-bomb so much. Peter Porker. Um, yeah, yeah, Peter Porker. Right, right. Or, you know, it's Captain Danvers or Captain Carter in this dimension right? or this reality, right? Um, and then the idea is that like there's other dimensions too. Like there's the dark dimension where Dormammu is from. Like that's not a another reality that's like it's it's like a thing that is like outside of the realities and i think that that's what they're going with with these mythologies okay. the question is how many are there and like is are they going to say that like gore is going into these different dimensions and like wiping out pantheons like what do you, do you think that's gonna connect at all i hope so I, I hope his plan is the same i mean i mean it seems to be that i mean in that most recent trailer that he yeah wants to kill uh, God, so you you and I were doing the calendars and you were saying that like the Ms. Marvel finale is like right around the same time as love and thunder, right? Uh, yeah. So love and thunder will come out the eighth and the Ms. Marvel finale is the 13th. Oh, I was going to say like, they might've had like a post credit scene that kind of tied it in with love and thunder, but maybe not. I don't know. That might not no, work that way. So. Yeah. Um, so Daddy, yeah, the they should work, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now I was going to ask you though, like, let's, let's go back to like the actual world that Kamala is in and stuff like that. So we have this, this marriage between her brother and his, um, you know, fiance or whatever. Um, I, I could feel like a lot of people would probably get turned off by that kind of stuff, but I actually thought that was kind of entertaining and charming. What yeah, you think? I like it. Uh, I, I think it's like a, it's like a thing that you just, it just needs to be a part of, um, uh, these, um, East Asian kind of uh things and i'm totally there for it I like hey it. did you end up seeing rrr yet I, I i started it i haven't finished it yet i, I haven't got I, that far I'm, I'm gonna try and finish it soon over this weekend so okay yeah just with all of our shows and then like the books i'm listening to i haven't finished rrr but there's some great like dance sequences and stuff in it and i know it's kind of a different culture but it, it was kind of reminding me of that watching it on the show Yes, absolutely uh i i, I just i mean I, I you did send me a um a, a link to a video about like why there was so much hype about this and it was absolutely fascinating like yeah. I, I, it maybe was want to watch the movie and I, yeah. I haven't finished it but i i really do want to and you know just like people learned the, the dance from like a, a piece of a trailer and then they cheered when they saw it in the movie like that's that's nuts that's awesome yes yes yeah that's patrick willems that got me into that movie and i bet you he is a fan of these mcu shows because he loves marvel and stuff like that too um but I was going to say, though, that the segue between that kind of the wedding and, and they're having all this fun, all of a sudden it turns into this kind of deadly confrontation.
But see, I didn't like that because it just kind of reminded me of so many of these sequences that we've seen in these Marvel shows. It kind of reminded me of like the finale of Falcon and the Winter Soldier and the finale of Hawkeye where there's like a public event. These bad guys come in and they kind of attack people, but it's all very like bloodless, right? I can't hear it, no. And so um, I guess like that's, it's starting to kind of just seem very formulaic and the fact that like they're attacking people, but it's always like they just kind of punch people and stuff. They're saying like these people are going to kill us, but it just doesn't seem like threatening and scary. Does it? Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Yes, but um, you know, I I think that's a reflection of that we're used to saying things like the boys, and then we're yeah. we're watching, you know, the inverse of that almost. Um, yeah. It seems it seems a little more apparent, but I, I think it's fine. Like like this is a PG rated show. I'm okay with that. Um, I don't necessarily need there to be gore and violence and, and death and all that. I think um, I, I think it was more apparent to me in in Obi Wan. You know, I, I mentioned that scene in the, the the fifth episode where the stormtroopers are shooting on the uh, on the rebels when they first open the doors and they hit nothing. Like no one goes down at all. They eventually right. hit people like, like at the very end. Right. Like, that, that to me seems ridiculous. But I, I don't. I didn't think that this was that bad. Yes, absolutely a pattern. People just get hurt. You know. Um, I, it, it's okay to me though. I, I mean, it's a PG show. I'm fine. With yeah. It. Well, it's but just like I, I think this right. conflict though was was rushed. Like they were super impatient. They're like, yeah. "Hey, let's be nice to her and maybe she'll help us." And then, like, literally a day later, they're like, "She's taking too much time. We have to go kill everyone now." I'm like, <laughs> "Hey, I get that they want to advance the story, but like, it's like a weird, a weird click there, you know?" Yes. Yes. Like, oh man. She wants to ask for another day. Let's slaughter a whole wedding's worth of people. Let's go. You know, it's like, yeah, too much. If they gave, but, uh, I feel like if they gave us, um, and, and maybe this is the case, they just haven't told us yet. If they, if they were on some kind of deadline, if they're like, hey, if we don't get out of here in the next like three days, we're gonna die, or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that, some some kind of peril that they're facing. Uh, and like I said, they still could do that. But if it's just like we're we're tired of being here, we want to go home. So I don't care if you all die. Just get me home. Yeah. Um, eh. I don't right, know. I, right. I don't want to throw out the, the dreaded lazy writing, but lazy writing. Yeah. 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 It, I, I, it actually did feel like quite a turn. I, I was like, wait a minute, why are they attacking right now? Like, is it just because she asked for an extra day? But yeah, it, um, like with the battle itself, they kind of pull out these weapons and with Marvel, it's starting to kind of feel like also that, there's kind of like this generic house style of like weapons and stuff too. It's like, Oh, they, they have like a mace or there's some kind of like whip thing. And you know, it's like the Asgardians have this and the people that are in that Tao low or, or Ta low place in uh, Shang-Chi have it. And now these Jin people have these sort of generic weapons. And I mean, one guy, it was like, it looked like he just kind of pulled his belt, uh, his belt, like out of his belt loops. And he just started whipping yeah. people. <laughs> you know? was, I, I don't know. It, they just didn't seem threatening to me, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess that's that's how they're showing how they manifest their powers. Um, I mean, Comrade had one too, so uh, I, I don't. Who knows? Maybe we'll have Miss Marvel have one eventually, because she's yeah. part of that too. But well, I, I did like I did like the use of her powers here. I, I mean, she's still inexperienced. She's doing a lot of blocks. Uh, she, you know, she's kind of in a a difficult situation, and she's kind of still adjusting. But I mean, we saw the big fist and all that. I mean, that, that's kind of her thing. Um, yeah. I, I, it was nice to see that. I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was super excited because, you know, that's like her signature thing, like you said. And, and she did that when Bruno got hurt, too. So I was like, yeah. Yeah. You know, By the way, I, I learned this about, when I was reading about, about the show. The actor that plays uh, Bruno, I think his name is Matt Lintz. Uh, that's right. He, he was in the running to, to play Peter Parker. Oh, he the, yeah. He would have been a good Peter I, I had no idea. Yeah. I, yeah. I think Tom Holland is special, but this, this guy would have made a good Peter Parker, I think. Yeah. I could totally see that. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you have more to say about Ms. Marvel? Um, what, 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 no, the, was there a cliffhanger end that they, what the, was They're that? going to, let's see, I, I wrote down the name of the city. It's actually a city, I'm, I'm embarrassed. Oh, Karachi, yeah, they're, they're going to go to, to Pakistan. Um, yeah, to Karachi, which is, yeah, is... Um, yeah I mean, I, I guess I, it, it kind of feels weird because I feel like this is exactly when Moon Knight went to Cairo or Egypt or whatever. So it feels a little, little formulaic, there. Yeah. Or pattern or something like that. But um, 
yeah, I, I guess we'll find out more about Aisha and and uh, you know where this this bangle came from and, and why and stuff. So um, I'm, I'm yeah. so excited for the show and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm enjoying it too. You know, obviously Phase Four is much more international, right? Like it's always like let's go to another country and let's go focus here, and it's it's going to be on this other culture. And I think it's it's a weird kind of like Avengers world type thing. In the comics, you know, during the Jonathan Hickman run, there's the idea of like Earth is an Avengers world. And I think that like life or art is imitating life where it's like, or life is imitating art. Um, you know, it's like they want to reach out to other countries and and, and make it like Avengers there too, you know? So, yeah. Um, yeah oh, well, you know. last question I have actually. Um, in this episode, we saw... Um, oh, actually, two things. Um, there was a lot of like really good sage advice given to Kamala. Like her dad says something really good, her mom says something really good, and then that mosque leader guy. He said, um, he, uh, "Good is not something you are. Good is something you do." I thought that was such a good line. Yes. And uh, and the reason I remember that is because uh, you know Bruno gives her a gift, and you see the uh, her costume mask. So I'm hoping we see the costume sometime soon. Yeah, probably when she's in that country. Uh, in, I mean, in Pakistan, uh, we'll probably see her in that costume for the first time. Yeah. That, that'd be cool. Yeah, I, I love that. That I've heard that um, expression before. That like good is something that you do. It's not who you are. Um, and yeah, I, I kind of had that, that moment. To to be, to, that quote to me like was like it hit almost as good as just as good as with great power comes great responsibility. Like that was a really good one to me. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and and you know if that's kind of like the motto of the show, then that's awesome. You know, yeah. I I'm all down. I it's gonna be interesting to how she gets her actual name of Ms. Marvel too, right? Because the show has definitely been kind of veering more towards her ethnic background and her identity that way, and it's been veering away from her superhero stuff. And so I guess it's gonna maybe come back before the finale too. Maybe maybe we'll get um. Maybe Brie Larson shows up and just kind of says as like a like a cheesy nickname and she runs with it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. And honestly, this show makes me real excited about that Marvel's movie. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Just how they kind of tie it all together. But uh, yeah, all right. So then we go from, and I'm hoping my kid is going to give us a little space because we're about to talk about The Boys, episode six. The language. <laughs> yeah. I can. Yeah. Possible. Yes. Uh Wait, let me see if I can. Hey, Clem, want me to give you some toys? You go play over there. Because Daddy's gonna talk about something pretty adult for a second, okay? Here, you want you want Magneto? Okay, she wants Magneto, man. She's gonna have Magneto and Moon Knight. Magneto was and right. then I'm gonna get Cyclops. Hold on a sec. And Cyclops um, is right too. Uh oh, did the, the okay? I'm still here. Here, take these two, these three. I'm not going to give her my Cthulhu statue that I got when I went on vacation. He's pretty cool, right? Oh, that's nice. Yeah, statues, uh, yeah, I, I would be careful with those. <laughs> anyway, baby, why don't you go play in the kitchen while Daddy talks, okay? Or up in your room. All right. Anyway, the reason why I'm sending my kid away is because this episode is called Herogasm. It's episode six of The Boys, and it is probably one of the most infamous comic book arcs for a comic, wouldn't you say? Yeah, um, it's yeah. I, I'll just say that. Although it, it, it's funny that I don't remember the the overall underlying plot of it as well as I remember all the debauchery of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's different because I, I said this to you a couple of episodes back, but like their free comic book day issue for the boys was the first issue of Hero Gas. Yeah, that's that's kind of crazy. <laughs> and I remember that it was basically like they're like saying, oh, there's this cosmic level threat because they in that world, it's like there are, are aliens and stuff where they like to imply that there's aliens. So all the heroes go away, but it's really just so they can have this like giant orgy on like an island somewhere. Yeah. But instead, it's in Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's much more scaled down. And it's just like this big party, you know, with these two twins that are essentially like the Wonder Twins, but they're kind of old at this point, and they really hate each other, too. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, I think that what we should do is, with the boys, we should probably kind of cover it the way that we would cover uh, Doom Patrol, where we would go, like, kind of character by character. Is that cool? Sure, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. So, um, 
just well, let's just get Black Noir out of the way because he's only in the very beginning. But essentially, he like pulls out his tracker, right? Yes. So um, Black Noir, you know, gets confirmation that Soldier Boy is back, and he freaks out, and then he rips out his tracker and he runs. We don't know what happens to him. Um, yeah. This is not from the comics. Uh, did I spoil what what, what was the the big thing that I did already? Yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna say it again just in case, but it, it is very different. Uh, I don't know where it's going. I, I guess it's in, it, I'm interested to find out. Um, but like I remember in in here, Kasim, in the comic, there's a there's a par- part where he runs Huey runs into him in like a sewer somewhere, and like he sticks something up Huey's butt just as like a joke sort of thing. So and, and, and this is like what's and it's like what the hell was that? And you don't find out what the hell it was until it kind of all comes together, you know, like three four arcs later. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, it's very different, but it, it it's the show's version is, is interesting just as much, just all the same. Yeah. Well, if I was going to have to guess at where they're going in the show, I would say that they're like they're purposely setting up Soldier Boy like his team payback sent him up to be captured by the Russians to potentially be experimented on. And the question is, why would they do that? And is it like Vaught was behind that and that Stan Edgar was behind that? Like, was it to find a sort of like anti-soup weapon? Like, do you think that's what's going on there? Um, so in the comics, the, the story arc with Lil Nina um, was about the Russians experimenting on criminals to give them powers on behalf of Vought. So I think they're trying to tie that together with it, with with uh, with Soldier Boy here, because Soldier Boy wasn't a part of that. Um, I don't know why they necessarily gave up Soldier Boy particularly. It seems a little strange, unless they, okay. maybe they felt he was too uncontrollable or something like that. It's The show hasn't quite made clear who, who was behind it specifically. I guess could be Stan Edgar. I mean, that makes the most logical sense there, but um, it doesn't quite feel that's exciting enough to me, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Th- yeah, there has to be a reason. I mean, his team obviously hates him, and so they're okay with him being captured by the Russians, but, uh, yeah, they haven't revealed, like, the reason why Vaught or, like, some other person would sell him out, you know? Yeah. It- it's kind of funny because... Um, Jensen Ackles is like so likable, I think, especially as like Dean Winchester. And he's kind of doing the Dean Winchester voice here. And he's even a little bit like Dean in this. Um, and he's he's kind of likable as Soldier Boy, but then he's like very like of his time, right? And he's very arrogant too. Yeah, very arrogant, very much um very much an anti-hero kind of aspect in the present, I think. I I, I still I still feel that his past self was is this evil deed Manchester, which I like, and, and okay, I, okay. I, like him, I like him in the present too. Um, but you know, th- there's going to be a point where we're not going to like him. I, I know it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Everybody has to do something upsetting and disturbing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we we he's already has sort of done that, but like he hasn't. He's still sort of in the middle, I guess, right now. Yeah. So um, you mentioned um, Little Nina. And so we do have a little bit of her in this episode. We have uh, Kimiko and Frenchie together. They're kind of like their own little separate story going on right now. And little Nina's in that. Um, There was a sequence where they get captured by her. And um, essentially, like, Frenchie has to choose between his girlfriend that he's had for a couple of seasons. And they have a big history. And Kimiko. And there's a gun put to both their heads. I honestly thought that one of them was going to get killed in this episode. Did you think that? Yeah, I was ex- absolutely one hundred percent expecting for them to kill the opposite of what he picks. Okay, um, but they didn't, and I think the way they what they're doing with it is they they did it to kind of contextualize that uh, Kamiko feels that it wasn't the V that made her a monster; she was always one. Um, right. This storyline, I, I am enjoying it, but it, it definitely is the one that's furthest away from the the main narrative so far. And yes. I, I guess that kind of makes sense, that, like. They, 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 I, I did always feel that they were more side characters or just like grunts in in the book. They, I mean, they had personalities all, but they didn't have that much development or depth in the comics as they do in the show. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, 
I I gotta admit that like when it cuts to them, I, I like the actress that plays Kimiko so much, and just like her expressions and stuff. Because I mean, obviously that's like the main way she's acting is just her like emotions on her face. Um, I just like watching her, you know, because she's so great. Also, did you know that she was Katana in the first Suicide, Suicide Squad movie? Oh, okay, okay. Well, good for her, man. This is a much like this is a step up from that. That's for sure. Yes. Although I do love that <laughs> yeah, character, just not that movie. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. 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 I love Katana. But yeah. Right. Right. Um, so. I, I was kind of worried she might actually die. Luckily, she did not. And I love that thing that you said where it's like, oh, I was the monster even before I got the V. So that's um, that's great. But then that's pretty much the end for their contribution to this episode. Then we have um, MM. And MM had a big part in this episode. We found out um, why he hates Soldier Boy in particular. So it looks like he's got that situation where he was living with his grandfather and Soldier Boy threw a Rolls Royce through their apartment and it killed his grandfather. So that happened besides the fact that his father died trying to get a soup in trouble in court. It's yeah. kind of crazy. Yeah, I mean, did, did they mention what soup it was? I mean, was this the reason? Oh, oh so you think that maybe like the grandfather. This is the case, this is the case that his father died over. So okay. Go, okay, right away. I got to go look up the wiki for the show and just find out what the fuck I'm talking about. Because I know for a fact he said that his father, like, died slumped over a typewriter because he was doing a case. It, it yeah. makes sense if this is the case, then, yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, we had this stuff happens to MM that's a little more physical in this episode. Yeah. I might as well say, uh, you know, while Clementine's out of the room or whatever. But basically, you know, MM, he, I mean, all the characters basically end up, except for Frenchie and Kimiko, end up at Herogasm. And uh, he's this, you know, this compulsive guy who's always fixing things and cleaning up things. And all of a sudden, he's, he's getting rubbed by this gigantic anaconda-sized penis. Right? Uh, What's it called? Like love sausage. Oh, well, so love sausage was in um, season two, in that yeah. like mental hospital that they went to go to. Yeah. Uh, and love sausage is actually a an ally of the boys in the comics, and he's pretty okay. great. And he actually has a, like a really good friendship with Huey. Um, oh. So in the comics, so he's a little different here. Uh, it was nice to see him back because, I, like, he he was he was very likable in the in the comic. Yes. Well, well, he's rubbing on uh, MM, and then like I think the termite comes back right at one point. The termite. Yep, that was the termite, and then he gets some goo on MM's arm. Yep. And then, and then probably gets... one of the, the funniest fucking things I heard is when MM opens the door and some guy yells, "Throwing ropes!" I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> he just like. Get splooged on oh, like oh, God. a dinosaur fucking splooged on him. Yeah. And I, I think I've heard the throwing ropes thing before, but I was like, <laughs> this has made me laugh so hard, man. Yeah. Poor MM. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, obviously um, there's there's lots of stuff going on here. Um, so we mentioned earlier in the in the, in the show that, you know, in the comics, this was uh, an event that was they, they created this fake story. They all had to go to space, and they just really went to this resort island and did it. It seems a little more toned down in in one sense, but still, um, for a live action TV show, there's a lot going on in the background of the show. I, I imagine this was a nightmare to film, for, yeah, yeah. For, on many levels. But yes. um, there, there really is a lot going on there. And part of me wants to like go back and see if there's anything I missed because there probably was. But part of me doesn't want to go back either. Yeah, yeah. A couple of flying vibrators and yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember because um, one of the points that they made in that free comic book day issue was that you had all these women, these prostitutes who had to take so many different drugs and stuff just so they could handle these soups that were, you know. Yes, and they they sort of they sort of get to that point when uh, I, I think uh, someone mentions it uh, and they show like, you know, uh, one of the, the, the women in pain there that seemed to be a human. Um, yeah. So they, they, they kind of do address that in, in their own way. Yeah, because you have a whole bunch of characters there. Not only do you have the boys there, but Starlight's there eventually too. And she's talking to, uh, I think the Deep and is there. pretty much everyone in the seven. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the Deep is there and then A-Train is there. Um, <laughs> Starlight at one point walks in on the Deep. And while we're talking about all this debaucherous stuff, oh. he's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. You know, we we had that one scene where he's eating the octopus, and then this time the octopus is eating him, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly, though, I have to say that I, I think – I still think the eating the octopus hit me harder. Like that was harder to watch than. than oh yeah, of course. It's so hard to watch, but that, that yeah, part was definitely harder to watch. Yeah, um, this is definitely on brand for him to be. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Getting aroused totally, by. It's like, what are the chances people have an octopus? You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good point. Good point. Um, he definitely has a type, and so, yes. um, what do you call it? Like I like it when you have a, a road trip and it's MM and Starlight because you don't usually see the two of them interact, and I, I like those two characters so much. And what you have in this episode is a kind of division amongst the team where you have like M.M. and, um, you know, uh, Starlight on one side and then Huey and uh, Butcher on another side. And it's interesting because all of them have been wronged by soups. Even Starlight, who is a soup, has been wronged by the Deep, right? And and, and also Homelander, all of them, really. Um, but it's, it's interesting that like M.M. and Starlight choose to – kind of be compassionate and not side with soldier boy whereas huey and uh butcher want to take the special v serum and like try to slaughter homelander with soldier boy yeah um it, it's it's definitely um you know it, it definitely a little grayer there so ultimately they, they all want the same thing but they just want to go about it different ways um yeah. you know the mm and starlight they, they want to do it in a way that nobody else gets hurt uh but butcher and huey kind of realize like do you know who, what we're talking about here like we have to take whatever shot we can get because if we mess yeah. up one that could be our only chance you know yeah uh, yeah and, and I, actually and I, I totally forgot. both sides yeah and i totally forgot that like mm goes to fight soldier boy at one point but luckily He's not able to steps in and uh it says it you know kind of says no and then he it's butcher with the baseball bat and yeah right 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 that whole sequence man is just so good like kind of before homelander shows up you have um a train confront blue eagle right uh blue hawk blue hawk blue hawk yes so, so it, it, there's this great sequence of a train because I, I was saying this last episode that i actually kind of like a train i kind of feel for him even though he's just as corrupt as the rest of the seven. Um, and so he has that sequence where he's meeting with, what's her name? Ashley, right? Ashley, yeah. Who also, yeah. fantastic actress. Holy Yeah. Shit. Like, to see her, if you go back and watch season one and see how she was and how she is now. It's such a huge transformation and it's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and she seems like so like dedicated to Vaught and, you know, she's kind of given up her soul, but yet she makes this great point with A-Train of like, you've murdered multiple people yourself. I've had to help cover them up, you know, and you, you, you don't have a leg to stand on. So, so that leads him to apologize to Huey, which I really liked that. I, I kind of like seeing the two of them interact like that. And then, um, you know, he goes and he takes Blue Hawk and just fucking drags him along the road. Yeah. Yeah. Rough, right? Yeah. Um, do you think he's dead yes uh I, I think if he didn't apologize to huey there if that scene didn't happen i wouldn't think that um but i i do think that he most likely is although it seems a little weird to end that arc now like two episodes before the end i i put it as like maybe like 85 15 you know that he's okay. dead sure sure yeah so like that's before the shit hits the fans then all of a sudden, we have Soldier Boy show up. He sees the, the two twins and uh, Love Sausage or whatever is playing some Russian music that, like, triggers him and just blows up a whole bunch of people, including those twins. And then Homelander shows up. And that was, like, so fucking exciting to see him there. Yeah. This um, this fight was um, just as good as the, the Stormfront beatdown from last season. Yeah. Me. Uh, yeah, you know, it was Butcher and Soldier Boy versus Homelander, and it was awesome. Yes. It, you know, as many comic book shows and movies there are, there's actually, like, way less satisfying fight sequences than you would expect. Because there's, like, a fight sequence in all of them. But, like, the truly satisfying, exciting ones, the ratio is, like, I don't know, for every 10 things that we watch, there's maybe, like, two or three really good fight sequences and this was one of them yeah i agree you know just just like it's it was just so fucking perfect where like they're fighting and like what they say to each other like homelanders like you know I, i'm so tough and then soldier boy is like 
tough. You're wearing a cape. It's just like, ah. And then, of course, they follow that up with him pulling the cape down, you know, to, to, to knock him down. Yeah. Uh, later on. Yeah. Like you said, like evil Dean Winchester, that's such a Dean Winchester thing to say. Like, you're wearing a cape, right? <laughs> And so they're they're fighting, and then Homelander says, "I'm the upgrade." And Homelander's just so scary, and and then like you know they're fighting, and you can tell that that Homelander's kind of outmatching him. But then Butcher shows up, and and then Huey shows up too. Oh my god, it's so good, man! Yeah, it was it was a oh yeah, I forgot I forgot Huey was involved too. Oh my god, yeah, this was a great great fight scene. Yeah, I thought that Soldier Boy was gonna kind of be like, "I can't use my power because I just used it." I thought that's how it was gonna end. Um. Yeah, I, I think I think definitely that the uh, the Russian music is triggering him to use it. And what actually did stop them? Did, did the Homelander just get up? And yeah, yeah. Up Essentially, like out? he like uh, Soldier Boy is struggling to like do the blast, and the guys were holding him down. But then yeah. Homelander still like just pushed himself up and flew away. I mean, the 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 music is definitely triggering him, but at the same time, he did purposely use it against Crimson Canis. So um, maybe it, like it needs to like recharge or something like that, and that's why yeah. you couldn't you couldn't finish it, finish them off there. Yeah. Hey, a lot of people were getting finished off though at uh, Hero Gas. <laughs> <laughs> so so we mentioned Homelander, and I wanted to go person by person. I love that sequence in the beginning of the episode where he's talking to himself in the mirror. So good. Yes, uh, that was very much like you know the Norman Osborn talking to the Green Goblin and. Spider-Man, uh, I I did really enjoy that, and you made it. Uh, you make an excellent point where you, uh, in our notes here that you know that he might be able to. He might be cutting out that part of him that needs to be adored. Um, yeah, and that's kind of what he threatened Starlight with, uh, honestly. So, yeah. um, I mean, the, the big question is: is that that does Homelander die in this season? Yeah, and I think I think it's a possibility, honestly. Uh, yeah, I think it's a possibility too. However, um, I think that Homelander is so like synonymous with this show that I feel like if he dies in the comics, they wouldn't kill him off in the show. And what I was thinking was they might do a thing where Soldier Boy uses his power on him, but like Kamiko, he loses his powers and they're not able to kill him. And then you have like Soldier, uh, not Soldier Boy, uh, Homelander almost like on the run, powerless. That could be very interesting, actually. That's a really good idea. So. I agree that Homelander is synonymous with this show. And I think the the show without him would be without, if he wasn't on the show, it would be a detriment to the show. Yes. I totally agree with that. But at the same time, I don't want this to be like Magneto syndrome where they need to include him in every single thing to, to the point of overuse. Yeah. Um, it's only three seasons so far. I mean, they definitely could do some more um, in the comics. It, it, you know, there is an arc without him. I mean, there are arcs without him being the main villain, but, you know, there is an arc of, of the comic after they kill Homer, Homelander. <laughs> so, spoiler yeah. alert, sorry. No, nah, it's okay. It's okay. I, I kind of figured as much. And honestly, you said that the end of the comic is very dark. And honestly, watching this episode, I was like, oh, wait a minute. I think I know what might be a dark thing that eventually happens. But I, I don't want to go into that because I, I kind of don't want to know. Okay. Um, because I think it'll be upsetting. But if you want to um, talk about it after afterwards, I'll happily tell you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But uh I, I wanted to talk about though, Homelander. One one other point though. Last week I made this point of like that the Emperor, one person said the Emperor is I mean not the Emperor, that Unicron in Transformers is essentially like the Emperor and the Death Star. And then I was saying that like Homelander is essentially like Trump and like our fear of COVID and like fascism in like a person, um, you know, like all of our modern fears in a person. And um, he did another very Trumpy thing in this episode where they had the news report and he essentially almost said fake news and he like yep. walked off the set, you know? Yep. He was trying to tell everybody, oh, it's, it's great. Finally, go out there, go ahead, go out there. And then he snapped. And he, he snapped. Right, right, right. Yeah. And that, that's a, a very COVID kind of thing where it's like, yeah, yeah, just go out in the public. Everything's okay. Everything's safe. And then, uh, what do you call it? Um, then finally, there was, there was two other points I just wanted to make real quick, which was that um, we saw a little bit of Newman, but we haven't seen her daughter. And I thought that was an interesting thing. Uh, yeah, because the last time we saw her daughter, she was just being uh, given the V. Um, it, it seemed like something was going wrong because there was some like cracking and stuff. Uh, who knows there? 
But yeah. um, yeah, she's in this episode. I really like what they're doing with this with the character. Um, the as I've mentioned before in the comics, the character is 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 a male, is a white male, and he's literally a moron. He's he's mentally challenged. Um, right. He's not fit to run a country, but bought wants to put him in office just so they can control him as a puppet. Um, right. And and he he actually shows up at Hero Gasm too. So. Oh wow! <laughs> in, okay. In the comics, anyway. So um, yeah, it's it's interesting. The scenes with Newman in this are interesting because she essentially offers to work with Starlight to take that Homelander because everybody has the same goal. Everyone wants to get rid of Homelander because they realize how dangerous he is. But uh, Newman is gonna kind of align more with with Butcher and Huey that you know. Um, it, it, and Starlight just just doesn't want to go down that path. She wants to do things on the up and up, and I think that sets up her video at the end. Yeah, and her video at the end, it's it's kind of funny because I feel like you could maybe kind of call it. You can kind of see it coming because in that conversation with Newman, she kind of admits it like she's kind of sick of this, right? Yeah. And, and the very end, she just makes that speech, and it's like, oh man, like kind of what Homelander did in the first episode and what she does here. It's like they go beyond that point you think they can go beyond. It's like, oh, whoa, they're, they're doing what they can't seem to be able to do. And um, I don't know what the repercussions are going to be. I'm, I'm real scared for her. Um, and I'm just kind of interested in, like, what's going to happen next for Starlight. Yeah, so um, in the comics, um, Starlight is present throughout the entire comics. But I think she is definitely more in, ingrained in the show, uh, in the storylines, than, than she was in the comics. Um, I don't remember if she does anything like this. I, I, I mean, I think she there's always part of her that wants to quit the seven. I think she does quit the seven at some point, but I don't remember it as being as public as this was. So I'm curious to see uh, what the fallout will be of this and how Homelander can potentially uh, turn around this and spin this around. You know, just like Trump probably would. <laughs> All right. Right. Something I wanted to mention in the last episode that I didn't get to, and I think is also present in this episode, is um, the, the bumps that Starlight and Huey are hitting in their relationship. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good point. In the show, in the context of the show, it is fantastic. Yes. I think um, the differences are that in the comic, um, Huey is, does not want this, the power, and in the show, he does. Mm. And the argument they have the, one of the main arguments they have that they fight over, believe it or not, is that she uh, she wouldn't admit to what happened to her when she first joined the Seven. Um, and in the comics, it wasn't the deep. It, it was it was like all uh, of it, it was Homelander and Black Door and somebody else. I don't remember who the third one was. A Train probably. Me, no, it wasn't A Train. I don't. It doesn't matter. Okay. It's minor point, but. Um, but that's what they fought over, and it always bothered me. Like that was actually made un Huey unlikable in, in the comic to an extent. He was so hung up on this, and it, it's the stupidest goddamn thing. Like there's no, <laughs> I mean, it, 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 she experienced a hor horrific thing, and he's right. mad about it, like because, like, like it was ridiculously stupid. So the divide they have here is so much better than the comics, and I think yeah. works will go a lot better. Yeah, I agree. Where he's like, I want to be able to protect you. And it's sort of like this kind of masculine thing. And he's doing it because he feels like his masculinity is, uh, you know, in question or whatever. So, yeah, yeah, I, I think uh, it's it's handled really well. And I feel bad for him. And I feel bad for her, too. Uh, and it seems like they're kind of heading for a break right now. So um, you said there's only two episodes left for the season? That's it. Oh, fuck. This is six. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, is it eight or nine? Am I wrong? Wait a minute. It was one thing I was I was worried about too, because you know, we were talking about like how they might not kill off Homelander, and I was like, Well, how could they escalate things more? If A Train just died, then they would have an opening on the seven. And what if they actually like brought Soldier Boy to be the other person on the seven? You know what I'm saying? No, I think um oh, maybe. Maybe yeah. it's possible. I, I think there's too much. I think Soldier Boy wouldn't like not being top dog. I, I think yeah. that that's the issue he has and why he even fights Homelander. Like I don't think he really cares about helping Butcher, really. You know, I mean, I think you very just as quickly say, "No, nah, I don't feel like it." Uh, you know, yeah. when, when push came to shove, if he already got got what he wanted. So I think um, 
that I, I don't see that happening. And the, the really interesting thing is, is that how different they are, the, the, their meeting is in the comics. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Literally in the comics, um, uh, uh, <laughs> your kid's still there. How can I word it's this? Okay. So they're, they, um, in, in the comics, they have uh, relations. Homeland okay. and Soldier Boy. So, to, so Soldier Boy can get on the seven. Like he th- well, and I mean, he, he thinks he's going to get on the seven by doing this. Because remember, this is not the original Soldier Boy. He, it's a legacy character. This is the third or fourth one in the comics. He's a very okay. different character. And um, so I, I don't think that we're going to see them both on the team at the same time. And I, I'm kind of. I'm, I'm kind of wondering if, if, if Soldier Boy is kind of like Stormfront will just be a focus in this season and will not be returning in the next. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Well, that'd be a shame because I really like Jensen Eccles and I, I think that he's a good addition to the show. Totally. But yeah, I mean, I, I guess the way things are going, you kind of have to, someone's got to die. Like everything is just building up and building up. There has to be some kind of death. Yes. So we'll see. What's up? Uh, agreed. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, well, so then uh, that's our three shows that we cover. We're going to cover the same ones next week. We're doing these on Fridays, um, just basically so that we can watch the boys and, and get it out there to you guys. If you have not liked and subscribed, please do. Uh, we'd also like to hear what you guys think. Which one of these three shows do you guys like the most? Do you like Ms. Marvel the most? Obi-Wan? Are you sad Obi-Wan's gone? Let us know in the comments. But uh, until then, Brian and I will be back next Friday to talk about the boys and Ms. Marvel. What a combo. All right, man. We'll see you next time. All right.